So are we at like a hotel or is this like the Twilight Zone? Hmm? What's going on friends? Logo Myers here for Cinefellas.com. Tonight I'm going to be reviewing Drew Goddard's film Bad Times at the El Royale. Ooh. So first off I want to say I'm a huge Drew Goddard fan. I loved, he was the writer of Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV show, you know, working with Joss Whedon and then they worked together in Cabin in the Woods which was probably my favorite film of that year when that came out. It was a huge surprise to see that at the theater really cool twist at the end of that movie. A lot of great performances and just a great horror flick. The Bad Times at El Royale, we have a, you know, A-list celebrities in this movie. We have Dakota Johnson, Jeff Bridges, John Hamm, Chris Hemsworth, Cynthia Erivo, you know, there's a lot of great actors and actresses in this film and it's definitely a murder mystery kind of crime film. So this hotel, it's up in Lake Tahoe. Half of the hotel is in California, the other half's in Nevada and there's like a line dividing uh, the two states in the hotel so you, you go inside the hotel you can stay in Nevada or you can stay in California and the joke in the movie is California is more expensive uh, so it's a pretty cool setup I don't know if this is an actual hotel up there but it, it looks pretty beautiful if it is I love Lake Tahoe I've been up in the Nevada side when I used to live out there it's a beautiful place and it's a really cool setup and a really great atmosphere for a movie like this Jeff Bridges uh, he's a priest in this movie he shows up at the hotel early on in the film he's kind of out of it and, uh, you know, later on in the movie, figure out what's going on with his character. Um, but he comes across Cynthia Revo. She's the singer. She's, this is 1969. So she was a singer back then. And they're showing up in this hotel. Different backstories, different reasons why they're there. And it, it really sets up the story. I mean, these two characters are really more the main focal point in this movie compared to the other actors and actresses. Uh, we have Dakota Johnson shows up. She's like a hippie. Something off about her. She's a bitch. Um, to everybody when she shows up and John Hamm is like a salesman but he actually has a real career that we find out about. In this film you find out there's a lot of backstories, there's a lot of flashbacks so you see the president where the characters are at in the El Royale and seeing flashbacks and seeing their backstories and why they sh ended up at this hotel. We have Lewis Pullman, he works at the uh, El Royale, he's pretty much the only employee there, he does the bar, he works behind the counter, cleans, does everything, and he's checking everybody into the hotel, and he's warning Jeff Bridges about, uh, you know, the hotel, and he's like, this is not a place for you, so it's kind of weird, and it sets up, a, you know, the first act of the film, you know, some mystery behind this place, what exactly is going on here, is it, you know, something supernatural, or just something with crime, we don't know, it just really building that atmosphere. And what I really enjoyed about this film was the set design and the framing, using the camera. It definitely had a lot of, you know, Quentin Tarantino factors to it. So the second act, we have all these different characters are all staying in their hotel rooms. And throughout the movie, there's like each chapter, it'll say like room four or room five, there'll be a different chapter about the character staying in that particular hotel room and then showing their backstory and, and what happened in their past. And you'll see that, you know, the more that the story unravels, you'll find out some of the dark past of these characters. From the second to the third act, um, some of the story got a little slow. Um, there was a lot of going back and forth between flashbacks and present time and trying to figure out this mystery that's happening in this hotel. I will have to say this movie does get a little slow. Um, it, it starts to go back and forth too much and it kind of loses you halfway through the movie because you're you know going back from Jeff Bridges character to John Hams to you know Dakota Johnson's and you get lost in the shuffle it was a little bit too much I don't mind having flashbacks but not for every character because you kind of lose the focus on the other part of the story. But Bad Times at the El Royale, this is a great cast, great ensemble of actors and actresses. Like I said before, I mean, they really work together. Um, you know, with a movie kind of with an oddball story to it and bringing in, you know, A-listers to this movie, it really worked out. You know, I love Jeff Bridges. He was probably one of the standout performances. Chris Hemsworth wasn't in the movie as much, only really towards the end, kind of like the Charles Manson cult leader figure, but he was really great at the end of the movie. Um, the other performances were also really well done. And I really like John Hamm, but I think his character was a little underutilized. It built so much momentum in the beginning and it kind of fizzled out. It's a weird movie. It's, it's hard to put your finger on it. And, you know, there's so much going on in this story and going back and forth and why these people are at this hotel um, and different tones. There's a lot of different tones in this movie and it, that kind of was a negative aspect of this movie. It, it felt like Drew Goddard didn't know which way he wanted to go. So he kind of went a 
bunch of different paths and it, you know, really the end product didn't work out. I was a bit disappointed because I heard a lot of great things about this movie. A lot of my friends that are movie critics and things like that really praise this movie and I went in with really high hopes. I was going to have a blast. I just kind of got bored with it, you know, from the second to the third act. I wish they would have cut out about 20 to 30 minutes of this movie. It was, it was actually pretty long, longer than expected. But in terms of camera work, the framing, uh, the shot set design, uh, wardrobe, the cast, I really love that about Bad Times at the El Royale. Really fantastic, top notch. The things I didn't like about it was obviously the story, the pacing. Uh, you know, the script it was a little silly and some things I would have cut out. But I'm going to give this movie, Bad Times at the El Royale, a three out of five. Chris Hemsworth hair pieces. <laughs> what did you guys think of Bad Times at the El Royale? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? What did you think of the pacing? What did you think of the cast? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit subscribe. This is Logan Meyer signing out from the El Royale Hotel. Am I on the Nevada side? or the California side. Ooh! Until the next review, cheese!